interconnected ocean, a vast blue expanse critical to life on Earth. And there's no better animal to represent the story of the ocean with all its splendor and uncertainty than the killer whale, or as it's scientifically known, the Orsinus orca. The orca lives in every corner of the ocean, from the Arctic to the Atlantic, the Southern to the Indian, to the mighty Pacific and beyond. This whale's story is the ocean's story, and it is one we all share. Welcome to SeaWorld's Orca Encounter. My name is Lorena, and it is an honor to introduce you to this intriguing and majestic animal. There's nothing like seeing a killer whale up close and learning about them and their natural behavior. We hope this orca encounter will help you better understand this magnificent creature and all that they represent. While they are found in every ocean, orcas living off the coast of Iceland are quite different than those near Costa Rica. In fact, there are at least 10 types or ecotypes of killer whales. An ecotype describes the differences between killer whale size, physical form, prey, social structure, and habitat. As you can see, the differences are subtle, but noticeable when compared side by side. Orcas are adapted perfectly to their environments. And even the whale's black and white coloration has a purpose. It camouflages the outline of their bodies in the water, making it easier for them to surprise and catch their prey. When viewed from above, the black of the whale blends in with the dark depths of the ocean. When viewed from below, the orca's white bellies match the brighter surface of the water, blending with the light above, giving them the perfect camouflage. Killer whales are a natural wonder, and the whales here will help me show you some of their physical characteristics. Their blowhole is perfectly designed to take a quick breath at the surface of the water. Even the location of their eyes work to their advantage. It looks like the eyes are located on the white patches, but that's a visual distraction. The eyes are actually located in the black area in front of each oh, eye patch, camouflage yeah. from scratchy prey. The fin on top of the whale is called the dorsal fin, which helps stabilize the orcas when they're swimming and regulate their body temperature.
The flippers on either side of the whale are called pectoral flippers, which are mainly used for steering and stopping. Each pectoral flipper has five bony digits inside of them, much like a human hand. And the lobes on either side of the tail are called flukes. The tail flukes are the killer whale's main engine, propelling them up to 40 miles per hour. That's as fast as some of our speedbirds. And they swim the fastest and use the most power when they're propelling their nearly 10,000 pound bodies all the way up. Splash. Killer whales are highly social animals with a well-defined social structure. An orca pod is always led by a female. Though just half the size of her male counterpart, she is in charge. It's all about attitude, not size. Because they live and work as a group, Orcas need to communicate with sounds and body language. Orcas use clicks for echolocation or navigation. Whistles to socialize in the pod. And calls for group coordination and hunting. studies here at SeaWorld show that early on, calves learn vocalization from their mothers. But as they grow, they learn from others close to them as well. This is a bottlenose dolphin call that Shuka learned and even taught other killer whales here at SeaWorld. In fact, orcas are the largest members of the dolphin family. here and in the wild use vocalization to communicate all the time. Like all animals, killer whales will use body language as part of their communication. A pectoral slap is used to show dominance or to get noticed. For example, a mother may use a peck slap to get her calf's attention. But when they really want to be heard, they breathe. Spy hopping is how killer whales coordinate or get a view of their surroundings when they hunt.
Every day they cooperate to survive in the wild oceans of the world. The orca's hunting techniques are as varied as the whales themselves. Norwegian killer whales will circle herring, herding them together. The whales use sounds to coordinate with each other and to disorient the herring. With the fish confused and contained, the whales stun them with their powerful tail flukes, making for an easy meal. until you experience it firsthand. Now luckily I do have two brave volunteers that are gonna show all of us what it's like to feel the power of the wave. You two ready? All right. About some extra encouragement from everyone. Perfect, I have your back all the way against that glass. Awesome, and now all you have to do is think like a seal. Uh, don't eat me, don't eat me, don't eat me. All right. exhaustion. The calves then move in to join the adults in the group. Whatever their prey, killer whales always cooperate and hunt together, making them a highly successful predator. Catching a ride and a wave. 
in her belt or surfing in a wave. love to be touched and they will rub their bellies on rocks whenever they can. Here comes Ulysses showing us what the whales from British Columbia will do. imitate each other in the wild. We see it here at SeaWorld all the time. The whales are constantly mimicking and learning from each other. Playful behavior does have a purpose. A tail whip is used in hunting to stun a fish. But to me, it seems that today these whales might be stunning all of you. trusted relationships and provide optimal health care, research, and quality of life. The whales here take an active role in their own health and well-being. Now, for example, they can present us their teleclutes, which is a very useful when our veterinary staff need to come over and obtain a blood sample. They're just floating. <laughs> The whales can also slide onto the scale so we can monitor their weight on a weekly basis. We have orchids showing us how they do it right there on the screen. <laughs> we can even obtain a breath sample from the blowhole, all because of the relationship we have developed day after day here at SeaWorld. And now it's time to introduce you to one of the whales. On her way is Kalia, and she loves it when the whole stadium gives her a loud cheer as soon as she's out of the water. You guys ready? Woo! Awesome. Now, Kalia is 17 years old. She's our smallest well in size, but that, don't let that fool you. She does have the biggest personality. Kalia, as well as the rest of the whales, have inspired millions of guests, and hopefully that includes all of you, to care for and protect for their wild counterparts. We challenge our whales every day to learn something new to engage and uh, engage their minds, diet, exercise, and of course play, all, all part of keeping the whales in great shape. The whales here at SeaWorld have helped killer whales in the wild by participating in many research studies. One ongoing study monitors the whales' heart rate and breathing to understand how marine noise pollution from ship engines and other sources affect wild populations. In another study, scientists from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, took measurements of the killer whales living here, including pregnant whales. By comparing these measurements with drone footage of killer whales in the wild, scientists are able to monitor the wild population's nutritional and reproductive states. 
other research has been done here at SeaWorld on the mother whale's milk composition. This research will help create an effective model to understand how toxins in the ocean impact wild killer whales and their milk supply. What we learn from the whales in our care every day is actively helping whales in the wild survive. And just by being here today, you've supported our rescue, research, and conservation efforts all around the world. If we work together, like the killer whale, we can protect the future of the Orsinus orca and this beautiful planet that we all share.